Hello guys, welcome to another FU Money show. Uh, today I'm going to address a few comments that I got from the previous video. But before that, let's uh, go into the charts and analyze the price to time model. Okay, here we are. So what's the situation here at the price to time model? So let's zoom in at the current price action. Here we are. We are still below the curve. So I'm not expecting any kind of big correction uh, soon. Um, I actually I have a comment regarding the price to time model so we are just going there in a few seconds so everything looks nice so far the 20 period weekly moving average is still following the price at a very nice distance and of course we have the 200 period moving average which is the weekly moving average uh, already inside the rectangle which um, is also a very good sign so it's catching up and going upwards as expected so overall this indicates we are still in a very uh, you know not very but a bull market so everything looks looks nice fine and the price as long as we don't cross it to the uh, upside of the curve will remain healthy in my opinion okay so today instead of just writing back a reply on the comments i decided to interact um, in a different way and i have the comments from the previous video one of them is about the price to time model so let's see what we have here so one of the comments about the price to time model or this comment is about the price to time model and comes from harry hudson and he says will you comment about the price exceeding the exponential curve in 2013 versus 2017 while it did correct was the correction low significantly high was the correction low significantly higher than where the price than where the price when it started exceeding the curve not easy to understand the question but i will try to explain the difference between 2013 and 2017 bull markets the trading view link that you posted in twitter doesn't plot accurately for me and i haven't had the time to draw it myself thank you for the videos and the price to time model okay henry so regarding the twitter link i also have <coughs> sorry I also have the, uh, I guess you've seen it already, but I also have the Medium um, um, article. So you have the link on my Medium article. If you look, if you go to medium.com, you have, you can search for price to time model. And my um, account is uh, Hugo Ramos. So you can search for it and for sure you will find the article that explains the price to time model. And if you go to the bottom part of the article, the last thing I have there is the link for the trading view public chart. However, if you want it to plot correctly, you have to remove the auto feature, which I will show you here. So there is there is uh, there are two options here on the bottom right of the chart auto has to be off and the log chart has to be on and this is the only way you can you can plot it correctly and then you have to adjust the scales uh, mainly the price scale on your right and the date scale on your uh, on the bottom and if you adjust them correctly you will get the complete uh, price to time model uh, plotting inside the current window that you are of course trying to see so 
If you follow these directions, I'm sure that you will be able to see the price of time model correctly on your computer. Uh, however, if you can't, just drop me a new comment uh, down below this video and I will try to help you. Also, there's uh, I already allowed people that I am not following on Twitter to address me directly by DM. So you can send me a direct message on Twitter also if you want um, some kind of help to have the price to time model on your trading view chart. Okay, now regarding the differences between the 2013 and 2017 bull markets, let me just zoom in a bit. Okay, too much. So here we have the bull market of 2013 and here we have the bull market of 2017. So you can see an obvious uh, difference. The bull market of 2013 crossed the curve, exponential curve to the upside in a very extended way. So what happens is, I sorry, I have to unzoom it again just to have this tool which I will use to show how much of um, retracement we had because of that. So let me just draw it and I will zoom in again. So basically this is the top of the exponential uh, rise of the price and then you have the bottom here so let me now zoom in so as you can see well this is just a bit a bit more well it's not exactly on the tip of the wick but it was approximately 75 percent correction because we overextended the rise of the price bitcoin <laughs> overextended the um, the rise to the upside of the exponential curve uh, too much so that originated a big a big correction in the first uh, in the first week actually if you consider this week here the correction which is lower than that one it's even bigger than 75 percent during this bull market so that's why my opinion is every time we cross the uh, exponential uh, threshold there the curve line uh, that um, goes from the lower left uh, corner of the rectangle to the top right corner of the rectangle where the top is I consider that every time the price overextends to the upper side of that curve usually a big correction uh, occurs and this is usually um, directly proportional to the extent of the price above the line. So as we had a really extended price action above the line, <coughs> sorry, the correction that we had afterwards to get the price again below the exponential curve was 75% approximately. So this is the big difference between uh, not so healthy price action which I consider was the bull market of 2013, which because of that we had two tops. Actually, we had a very exponential rise here, then a retracement, very big retracement, 75%, and then a second top uh, culminating with the end of the bull market uh, in 2013. So if you compare it now, with the bull market of 2017 you can see that we never crossed the line to the upside and thus having um, very as compared to the previous bull market very short retracements around 15 to 25 percent max and we had them several times not just one so we had one two three four five which i would not even count this one because it didn't touch the 20 period moving average but we could say four or five uh, smaller retracements to the top which i consider to be an example of a much healthier and sustainable 
bull market and price action. So this is the big difference between the 2013 bull market and 2017 bull market. Uh, let me read again your comment and see if uh, I answered well, it is correct. The correction low significantly higher than what the price when it started exceeding the curve. It's not easy to uh, understand the first part of your question. Uh, however, I believe I pointed out the biggest difference between a healthy and sustainable price action in a bull market which i consider was a 2017 one and against or versus the 2013 bull market which was not so healthy and sustainable as you can see because of the 75 percent correction that we had in this year okay so the price time model is again uh, analyzed let me just check one last time so the weekly candle which we are still in the middle of the week for this candle is below the uh, exponential curve so for me in my opinion this continues to be a bull market a very healthy price action so far as long as we don't overextend the price to the upper side of that curve so that's it for the price to time model and thanks to Harry Hudson for your comment. I hope I helped you and I answered your question. So let's go now to the MRI, tone vase MRI and oscillators strategy. Let me start with the monthly. So in the monthly nothing to see here. Uh, just move along everything looks the same since our previous video no big changes unless you, you consider that there is uh, this uh, so this candle here went from the bottom of this uh, area uh, defined by the two red horizontal lines we went from uh, basically the bottom of this area to the top so this candle rose a bit and the general uh, the general analysis for the monthly charts remains the same we are still in a very very bull uh, market if you consider the monthly candles we are still on a green three of nine so I expect some more upside and the oscillators continue basically doing the same as the previous video so let's go to the weekly no big changes also uh, the things continue basically like yesterday's um, we still have the divergence the RSI is not moving so much um, so this is the difference you saw basically on the monthly we were basically here and then we rose this part of the defined by the red lines area and the monthly chart is now here as also the weekly chart so we have some space again these are my two trend lines which will indicate um, some kind of uh, alarm if they are crossed to the downside the first one here the second one here so for me we are still in a bull market as long as we don't cross these two lines which I would consider the space between the second and the first I would consider like a warning area that things could be changing but so far everything looks good and by the way we have a green star this week so it's uh, also a good sign uh, for it's a buy uh, it's a buy signal from the MRI and it's a good sign for a bull market the Fisher distance from the EMA is very neutral so we are approaching zero closer than yesterday the MACD is also still bullish very bullish but the blue line is becoming horizontal this could indicate that we are uh, not uh, in a crazy bull run like the previous month and we are now cooling down a bit but still sustainable bull market in my opinion okay so let's go to the daily chart the daily chart you have the triangle here very well spotted by tone vase we had the mri top the price oscillated inside the triangle until it finally broke to the downside finding support on the 50 period moving average which is the yellow uh, one 
So let me just zoom a bit here so you can see better. Uh, then we had um, a very strong reversal to the upside, some resistance again when crossing the 20 period moving average and the top of the triangle which culminated, which were just joining together, the top of the triangle and the moving average. However, Bitcoin was very strong br breaking that resistance and we are now trying to break one of the last resistance we have for new all time highs and let's see what happens so not so different from yesterday let's go to the oscillators the rsi is very very positive the volume however continues to go down which is for me a bit strange we are going up in price we are going down in volume by time which is not a very good sign so the macd becoming almost crossing the orange line here becoming bullish again uh, we will look into the bitmax funding rate in the next chart and the fissure distance also neutral as you see we found we crossed this resistance here which was uh, in the volume buy price was one of the last areas of resistance we are now trying to break the last one which is this small one you can see here um, with another zoom so you can see it better just this area here and I guess if we break this to the upside maybe tomorrow today uh, but tomorrow probably we will have better news we can expect new all-time highs and probably break the third range boundary which corresponds to the MRI top uh, so I would like the weekly candle to let me just go back to the weekly very quickly i would like the weekly candle to close above the red line which is around 59 so if we have a weekly close above 59 i'm very very bullish okay let's go to the four hours now uh, just a different look into the same so the MRI just loaded we are on a three a green three of nine we are retracing a bit here as long as we don't cross this candle to the downside of this close here I remain bullish we should close the price above this red line for sure if you want to be very bullish so the line is on 59,000 and if we close the week above this line or if the weekly candle closes above the 59,000 this is a very very bullish uh, sign of the price action however in the short term you see a small rise in price but in the previous uh, in the previous charts you saw that the price was going down so the average of the weekly and daily uh, remain more relevant than the four hour chart so this could be just a short a short um, increase of the volume but weekly monthly weekly and daily are still going down okay the rsi is indicating a reversal a short term reversal here on the four hour chart which corresponds to that candle we are not going to overextended territory so that's good so this small retracement is good as long as we don't close the red candle below the opening of the green candle which has by the way a buy signal so the macd continues bullish and here is what is worrying me right now in the short term the bitmax funding rate crossed over my threshold of 0.11% <coughs> sorry so this indicates market sentiment could reverse and it's not good so if we continue to go up in the bitmax funding rate i'm sure that the market will have some kind of reversal here and we could see a longer uh, a longer period of reversal not just for one or two candles but maybe three or a bit more and that could be not so good because then we would not close the weekly candle above the 59,000. So the Bitmax funding rate, it's overextended in my opinion. It will, 
it will uh, trigger uh, probably it will trigger a market reversal on the price action here and i hope this comes back down below the red threshold so that <coughs> we can have a better uh, sustainable price action going trying to go to break the all-time high okay let's just check how this is on the hourly chart exactly so this is coming back down i hope we will find some kind of support here on the 20 period moving average if not i'm sure the 50 period moving average will help um and and there you go there you go you have uh, an hourly mri top and that's one of the reasons also we are coming back down so not just the bitmax funding rate overextended above the red threshold here but also we had an mri top on the hourly and this is one of the reasons we are coming back down now so i just hope we don't cross the opening of that candle over there to the downside that would be not a very good sign but probably we will find support on this rising moving average here okay uh let's go back to the four hours yeah so we are still coming down as i record this video and you should pay attention to this area if this candle closes below that one uh probably it's not very good so let's go uh <coughs> also i have another comment before i forget and this was for the daily chart so let's go quickly to the daily chart just a bit uh, so this comes from uh, Mindocs and he says you can draw a channel on a daily chart by connecting high and low wicks. So far the daily candle is above the channel but if it closes below 57k the probability of pullback increases. So <coughs> uh, sorry my throat is not very good today. So let's see. If you draw a channel on a little chart by connecting high and low wicks. Okay, let's draw a channel starting there and the wicks. So, yeah, I'm touching that wick. Now I'm touching these two wicks here on the bottom. Very nice, very nice channel, by the way, Mindok. He saw a very nice. Uh, ranging, cha ranging channel here so let's see what happens so he says as long as the price remains above 57 where is 57 57 is here yeah exactly you are you are completely right so this is the break of a uh, ranging channel inside a ranging channel and because my main range channel as you know it's the on the pro indicators uh chart and it goes beyond this so this one this ranging channel here is inside the other one so for me in my opinion the bigger time frame ranging channel uh, has more relevance than this one however this one for the short term uh, for the short term period is also indicating that we broke the channel and we are now going upwards to new all-time highs but as mindo very well said we have to keep the price above 57 which is precisely the top of the channel so we could uh, the, you know the price action could allow a retracement to 57 again and then continue to the upside and that would be very healthy so uh congratulations to you you uh, identified a range channel here and a very nice one that could give us some hints for the future price action i'll just leave this here and let's go finally to the pro indicator strategy not <coughs> trying not to extend this video too much today or i'll have to stay like two or three hours waiting for the uh, for youtube to uh, allow my upload to happen uh <coughs> so basically my main channel is this one as i was discussing in the previous chart and as mindo said so if you if you draw the channel again what he was saying was that we have a channel that goes from the weeks to here and here 
exactly so this is the channel Mindo was talking about and if you zoom in you can see that this is a ranging channel inside a ranging channel so to me the bigger time frame ranging channel which is this one here uh, defined by the first range boundary the second range boundary and the third range boundary this one is more relevant to me however this is also a channel so in a, in a smaller time frame you could consider this also um, a way to identify where the price could break up and as you can see it did we broke up the top of this smaller range channel we retraced again to the top of the channel and we continued up which is a very very healthy price action so very well spotted and i'm glad you sent me this comment so i could also put it in my uh, the current video and show it to everyone Okay guys, so for, for me and today we are done with the analysis. Let me just go back here. Uh, thank you for the comments. I hope it's um, just a better idea to answer your comments in the video and also using your own analysis on my, on my videos and we can cross um, you know, your understanding of the charts with my understanding of the charts and that's a very good thing to do. Uh, this is what I hope that will happen when we have uh, live streams and live sessions where you guys can just write to me in real time. We can analyze it together and draw some conclusions. So I hope you continue to enjoy this content and share it with your friends. And if you enjoyed this video and this uh, kind of change of format where I answer people also, not just by writing on the comments, but answering live on the video, uh, if you enjoyed that, smash the like button and share the video with your friends. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.